it's time to brew up another beer. So tomorrow I'm going to brew up um, the Cali Mountain Pale Ale, which is basically one of my go-to beers. It's basically Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. So in this, uh, it's a pretty easy recipe. It's a 60-minute boil. We're going to start off with 11 pounds of Turo at 12 ounces of uh, caramel malt. Um, we're gonna at 60 minutes start with half an ounce of magnum. Uh, at 30 minutes, we're gonna do one ounce of pearl. Uh, one minute, we're gonna add two ounces of cascade, and we're gonna do a one ounce of cascade of dry hop. And I'm gonna do that at the end of fermentation. I am gonna ferment tomorrow in in my firmzilla. Uh, my, I'll, I'll do it as a pressure ferment, and I'm gonna use Lalam and Voss Kaveic. Um, I love it. It flavors good. It's quick. It's easy. Um, um, and now that I'm getting to uh, fermenting under pressure, it's just, it's quick and easy. Um, and as much as I uh, like the pale ale, uh, it, it's effective. Um, I'm also going to do some, uh, I do purified water here. Five gallons of purified water from our water store is pesos. So just over, a, I don't know, a little over a dollar or something for five gallons. Uh, so I'll treat my water. Um, that's about it. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. And to, in addition to sharing uh, my brew tomorrow uh, of the pale ale, I also kind of wanted to show some of the progression of my my brewing system that I have here so when I first started out I was doing um, uh, liquid malt extracts and I did that for a little while and knew right away that I wanted to go to all grain uh, mainly because my buddy Derek kept busting my uh, you know what about going to all grain because suppose it was cooler glad he did that because uh, you know it was, it was a it was a great jump um, so I started doing that this was this is the first kegerator that my lovely wife bought for me when she originally bought it for me though it came with the regular, uh, you know, the regular standard old cheap ass, cheap tap. Um, and so we upgraded, actually it was, I believe it was a Father's Day gift. She let me upgrade to my Nuka taps. I got two, two Nuka taps um, and that's been a lot of fun. So I've been doing that and on my, um, basically I was uh, doing my fermentation with temp control in my freezer there that uh, my lovely wife also bought for me. And then last year she wanted a new refrigerator and I didn't object to that. And that's when I went to getting two more Nuka taps here, which is kind of nice because I got my kegs in there, but I also have uh, beer and other things. Um, we have a you know backup freezer with food, but also glasses and stuff. So that's been kind of nice. Um, I've been using this fermenter here. I actually had three of them uh, for a long time. Um, I bought a Firmzilla all-rounder up there. I, I bought it a while back, but I just, so many of my beers um, use a lot of hops and I just struggled opening it up, putting the hops in. Some people are like, oh, get, get the magnets. They work great, but it just, it never was a fun brew day. Actually, the brew day was fine. It was never fun for dry hopping. So uh, I did a lot of research and thanks to some friends who supported me financially, uh, I decided to go back to the all-rounder though, but now using the hop bong. And so I've used that once. Um, and with the pressure fermentation, I don't have to worry about my temp control as much. I'm also brewing and fermenting with um, Kvek, which allows me to brew at higher temperatures. So with some changes now, I am going away from temperature control, which allow, which is gonna allow me to now use my temperature control for two or three more taps. Uh, so I, I think I'm either going to uh, have extra taps inside there. I don't want to make this a keyser because I'm also thinking about using this for if I want to carve up a keg uh, for people that might want to have a keg at their house, which a few people have indicated they want. Um, so anyway, just these are some of the kind of the transitions I'm, I'm leaning towards. I brew in my Brusilla. I love it. Uh, I, I'm tempted to go with the bigger version so I can do 10 gallons at a time. But uh, you know, it's baby steps. It's a lot of learning. Uh, as soon as you think you know something, uh, there's something else to learn. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow on brew day. But that's kind of, uh, oh, well, this is one of my new favorite friends too, is my, uh, I'm able to mill my own grains, which has been um, a lot of fun and a big difference. So it's really nice. Um, I want to thank my, the people that have supported me along the way, my wife, uh, some other people out there who, you know who you are. I really appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, looking forward to brewing again tomorrow. Cheers.
2.37 of calcium chloride. I don't care how many times I do this, I still feel like I'm doing something wrong. Got my little scale out here and I'm measuring out my chemicals. But we want good beer, right? 2.37. And I, my, little, my little bowl here is uh, Tweety Bird. You gotta love Tweety. All right, so we are gonna heat six gallons of water to 162. And for our sparge, it was 1.64 gallons. I'm adding uh, calcium chloride, Epsom salt, and gypsum. Uh, I like to just get my stuff, my water ready, my chemicals ready the night before, and that way in the morning, uh, before I take Mika to school, I just uh, plug it in, the Firmzilla, and, or the Bruzilla, and uh, get it started, and it's just a nice casual start to the day. So I'm gonna finish this up here, wrap it up for the night, go watch the Dodger game, grab a, a beer. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out. drop this down to 152 uh, we'll let it mash for 60 minutes then we'll do a mash out which I'll explain later uh, I've got it recirculating just a little bit in other words the liquids coming up through the small pipe here and it's just circulating through we're trying to extract as many of the sugars as we can uh, but yeah so I got 60 minutes to go do some more work so uh, sit back and enjoy all right we're heating up some sparge water here uh, to rinse our grains but these two do Show for the people, show for the people over there. Turn the camera into the shop. Another fun day. The hardest part right there. So when we're rinsing our grains, I want to make sure that it goes all the way down. The water goes all the way down before I pour more on there because otherwise it doesn't, it's not as efficient. So sometimes this is a slow, slow process based on how much grain I have. <clears throat> um, so it is what it is, it's brewing. All right, so the boss came to check in on me and make sure uh, everything was going according to plan. Uh, I'm gonna say boss, she's, she's the one that, that makes this happen. She's got that big paycheck coming oh. in. <laughs> That's all. One thing I've learned over the years to uh, help my efficiency out a little bit and clarity of my beers is um, two things. I use a brew in the bag in my Brewzilla, and this is how much, and again, this is a light grain bill here, but this is how much, I don't know if you can see, that's how much grain was in there. And so that's the first thing I do. The second thing I do is with my grain basket, what I'm gonna do here is I just kind of see if I can get some more Blew it out and I normally get a decent amount. Uh, so just while I'm heating up my water to boiling, I just get some of this out, pour it back in, and uh, just something I've learned over the years. Hopefully, it helps you out too. Treats. In a second, well, our first hop addition is a half ounce of Magnum. I'm telling you, if you've never smelled hops, find some. They, it's like one of the best smells in the world. Ah, never gets old. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we'll go about 60 minutes on that. Uh, and uh, actually, we got a few more things to do in that 60 minutes, but the boil will go for 60 minutes, and then we'll uh, 
get going on the fermentation. So check it in a sec. All right, uh, I just want to address a couple things. When I first started brewing, uh, it was because we're moving to Mexico and I wanted to make sure I had some good beer down here. So I first started buying all my equipment from uh, a company called morebeer.com. And I continue to buy all my stuff from them because they have great customer service. Um, they ship stuff free if it's like more than 59 bucks and I get it in a couple days. Well, it's shipped to my address uh, in a couple days. Um, but my philosophy with brewing is there's so many components of it that at this point, I'm not worried about creating my own recipes. Um, I'm worried about getting my techniques down. So I continue to keep buying their kits. Now that's gonna change here pretty quick because there's a few um, recipes I really like and I'm making a lot of, so I'm gonna start buying in bulk for those. But for the most part, um, you know, they come prepackaged like this. Uh, they've got the directions. The directions could be better. Uh, but they come with all your, you know, everything you need and then it's just up to you as far as your technique. And to me, technique is much more important. One ounce of pearl going in at 30 minutes. Ah, oh, smells good. All right, we're coming back down to the last uh, 15 minutes or so, and this is when it gets a little, uh, uh, I need to focus a little bit. So I'm gonna drop in my wort chiller now, and what the wort chiller does is when we're done brewing, I'm gonna cool it down, the, the wort. Um, because I'm using Kovac, I only cool it down to about 110 before I transfer it into my fermenter, which is really nice. If I was using a traditional, uh, ALU strain, I'd have to cool it down to about 70 degrees, which takes a lot longer. So we'll knock it down. Um, basically, it recirculates cold water through these tubes. Um, so we'll cool it down. Uh, I'm gonna put it into the boiling uh, wort right now because it will um, sanitize anything that might be growing on it. Um, so once we're done boiling, that's when we need to be worried about uh, infections and stuff like that. So we wanna make sure everything's sanitized. So I'm gonna quit talking for now. Uh, we're gonna drop in um, two ounces of Cascade on the last minute. I'm also gonna put in some yeast nutrient, which basically is like food for my Kvek, so it goes even crazier. Um, and I'm also gonna put in a clarifying tablet at five minutes, and that's just gonna help my beer uh, clear up uh, in the fermenter. So that's pretty much it for now. I'll talk to you um, later on down the road. All right, it is time to transfer. Got my Quebec here. It's been san soaking, cleaning, and sanitizing here. Let's go ahead and pop this in and let the magic begin. This is where all the work starts, right here, is with the yeast. All right, let's lock her down. The reason I just got this table here is so I can do this. One of the problems before with this hot bong here is it wouldn't fit in my cooling chamber. And that's what's got me going to this. Shut that for now. There we go. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my spunning valve and we're gonna connect uh, my oxygen out and into a keg. So the CO2 that's coming out of here, we'll go into a keg. I'll put my spunning valve on the keg at about 15, and that way I can collect the CO2 in my keg, and then I'll use that CO2 to push this beer out of here later when I wanna keg it. So little tricks along the way. Um, there's always something to learn, like I said. I think that's all for this, uh, for this video. Um, this should start seeing activity within two hours maybe. The Kvek is pretty crazy. Uh, once fermentation's done, probably in about two days, I'll go ahead, uh, drop the temperature down to room temperature, uh, thanks to some advice that my buddy Freddie in Mexicali is encouraging me to do. I'll dry hop after fermentation around 68 degrees, let that set for a few days, um, and then we'll transfer to keg and I'll be drinking this. Today's Tuesday, I'll probably be drinking this on Saturday. So uh, I'll let you know how it turns out. Thanks for following along. I'll add one more, uh, one more look at uh, what I'm doing here before I'm gonna cover this up here to keep the light off of it. Um, but here we are, I've got the pressure is gonna build up in here. It's gonna go, the gas is gonna come out here. It's gonna go into our keg. And then I'm gonna set this at about 15 PSI. We can already see there's pressure building up. And the excess pressure will go into our star sand here. Um, 
So again, that's it from Bahia Asuncion Brewing Company, um, which anyway, uh, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, um, please drop them in the comments. I also really, really encourage uh, feedback on how, if you're a brewer, how would you improve my brewing? Because um, that's what it's all about, is drinking good beer and getting better. Cheers.